Alright guys, today I want to do a video that, as the title already says, does more money equal more better. So today I want to look at four frame lock knives that are in my collection that range from $30 all the way up to $1,000. And I wanted to basically break this down, going over each step and really taking a look at saying like what does more money get you as far as knives go so of course there's also or it's worth putting out this kind of disclaimer that there will always be more and better purchases or more or less better purchases i should say um so there will always be better and worse purchases to make at each price point so a really good 200 or 100 dollar knife might bring value that a three or four hundred dollar knife might bring you or you know a really good six hundred dollar knife might perform as well as some one thousand dollar knives right and then there are also you know cheaper knives that you can buy like either might be some you know or there might be some knives that are you know in the 100 to 150 dollar range that perform as well as a $30 knife, right? So there is always some ambiguity here, but within reason, this is a pretty, I think pretty good list of solid choices in each price point. So without any further ado, let's jump right into it. So first off, we have, of course, the $30 knife. And this one in this case is a Kershaw Emerson collaboration CQC6, and this one is in D2. And even within this own family of Kershaw Emerson collabed knives, you can get blade steels that are far less well performing. I think the D2 versions are pretty good. So overall, I think this is a pretty well squared away blade. However, some of the big things you're going to note here with cheaper knives, especially under $100, is usually, especially if it's a frame lock or a liner lock, you're going to be dealing with a piece of steel. And so this is a piece of stainless steel, and we'll talk about it more why these knives are titanium and why this one isn't. But a lot of that does have to come come into play with cost cutting measures so it's far cheaper to use a piece of steel or stainless steel for a frame lock liner lock or really any type of lock than it is titanium now i will say this one does have g10 on it at least on this handle slab and it's not the most well constructed but i will say the fit and finish overall is pretty good um, i will say this little backspacer on true emerson's this is going to be a piece of g10 this is just a piece of generic plastic on this guy and so you will see a lot of like once again cost cutting measures where people probably wouldn't be looking in addition to that too um this the blade you know from the side angle the blade looks pretty good on either side it is of course made in china so you will you know have to take that for what it's worth some I will say the whole made in China thing is once again becoming more ambiguous as well because we are seeing, you know, close to thousand dollar knives coming out of China as well. But by and large, if you're buying a budget knife, it's going to have a lot of um, cost cutting implements implemented into it. So it's not easy to notice that when looking at a side profile, but if you do look in places like this, you know, like you kind of look around the lock, it is not going to be the cleanest or most pretty looking blade stock. Um, it's going to be very round, very thin, and kind of overall like crudely, like you can tell that this was like casted essentially because it just doesn't look as like polished, as refined, or as machined overall. And then lastly too, this blade does have a pretty darn good action, but it is running on Teflon washers, as opposed to the alternatives here, like phosphorus bronze washers, caged ball bearings, um, like ceramic caged ball bearings, stuff like that are going to be things you will see on more expensive knives. So you're just not gonna see that on a cheaper blade. Overall though, I will say, for around $30 to $50. Something like this Kershaw Emerson is pretty squared away for its price point. We'll say that, I will give it that. All right, now let's jump up to $300. Now, in my opinion, anywhere from like $150 to $300, you're going to see a lot of similarities in blades. Of course, approaching $300, you're going to see a little bit higher quality usually, but around this price point, everything's gonna perform nominally similar. 
So this one, of course, is a small Emerson. This blade, of course, is a small Hinder XM18. This is the three inch version. And uh, this one is, I think, a pretty good representation of a 300-ish dollar blade. Sometimes these guys go for more, but some of the immediate things you're going to notice is, like I said, you're gonna see things like phosphorus bronze washers, titanium everywhere. So everything that was steel on this is now going to be titanium, including um, one thing to note is that like on this guy, you have G10, just like on this knife, but the lining, liner material on this is going to be titanium, whereas the liner material on this G10 handle slab is going to be stainless steel. And it's hard to exactly show in the video, but there is a noticeable weight difference. This is closer to, I think, six ounces, whereas this is well below that, probably in, in, or, in and around three ounces. So this is going to be about half the weight of that. And part of that is due to the fact that this is a slightly smaller blade, but also once again, that titanium makes a pretty big difference. And once again, you're seeing titanium everywhere. This, um, pocket, cl this pocket clip, titanium. This pocket clip, steel, right? So like it's being used everywhere. So yeah, overall, there's a lot of titanium, which just means that there's going to be a lot less weight. In addition, the other large jump that I haven't talked about already that is pretty obvious is going to be blade steel. Now blade steel isn't always the most important factor in a blade and that's a discussion for many other videos but you will see by and large more premium knives featuring more premium steels now hinderer actually and maybe ironically is one of the probably one of the least best um think least best makers to compare because they do make a wide myriad of different blade steels from 01 dual steel all the way up to 20 cv and m390 but they do make a wide variation of blade steels to fit people's needs and that is another thing that is worth pointing out i think really when you begin to step up into more expensive knives is options with a lot of different makers with some exceptions um, you will begin to see different knife makers offer options that fit your needs better. So with something like this Kershaw Emerson, you're gonna buy it, it comes in D2 tool steel with a G10 handle, and that's it. If you don't like it, then oh well. But you will begin to see with more expensive knives, things like micarta inlays or different things that may help. They may be more stylistic some of them are more practical once again you know different blade steels like m390 20 cv cpm s35 and 45 vn all have different performance characteristics that are more conducive to certain environments applications and uses so that is a big thing that you will notice with most kind of um, more expensive knives is is a jump up in different applications and options in addition to, and we'll just jump up to the $600 knife, and this is a Chris Reeve Knives, large and cozy with micarta inlays. Um, one thing that is worth noting at more expensive um, price points, even into the like $150 and $200 price range is customer service. It's not talked about as much anymore as it was when I was like first getting into knives, but it is definitely worth noting that when you do spend more money on knives, even going up to like $100, $150 knives, you do gen generally see an increase in things like lifetime warranties or limited lifetime warranties, or ultimately companies taking more responsibility for the products that they make and standing behind them. Once again, with something like this Kershaw Emerson, if you snap the tip off of it or you break it in any way, it's basically a disposable blade that you're going to just throw out. Whereas with other knife companies, and once again, this isn't every expensive knife company, but by and large, many of them offer warranty and repair services. So say you snap the tip off of an, uh, a Chris Reeve, um, large and cozy like this, God forbid, you can send it back to Chris Reeve and it will probably not be free, but they will replace the blade for you. So 
it's one of those things where this is a knife that you can have so long as you don't lose it you can have this blade for the rest of your life and granted if you once again break the blade you may have to pay for it to be rebladed but it's going to be at a substantially less expensive cost than buying a whole new Chris Reeve knives large and cozy right they'll put another blade on there and maybe it'll be 100 150 bucks and then you're good to go right so that is another thing that is worth noting about um, more expensive versus less expensive knives now once again stepping up between 300 to 600 dollars this is a point where you begin to see that law of diminishing gains you're not going to see as large or as many improvements once again all titanium everywhere outside of the micarta inlays but you're also going to see you know maybe some better use of steels this one in particular has s45 vn but that's not necessarily a huge step forward where you're going to see the biggest difference in quality or you know where you're going to notice your money in a more expensive knife like this is going to be in fit and finish and overall something especially like this chris reeve knives uh, in cosi is that if you take apart one of these knives the tolerances to taking apart this blade are incredibly tight like everything on here is extremely finely fit like the fitment of threading on um, any of the hardware or any of the different um, kind of pieces that have to be press fit through these titanium handles the tolerances are extremely tight and so that just means that you're going to have a knife that is once again very well built you have very tight tolerances and sometimes it doesn't even like to fully swing open because it's just that tight of a knife and so overall you're going to have a knife that will take a while to break in but will break in nicely and last a very very long time in addition to you're going to have a lot more attention to detail so things like with these previous knives like say this one for instance here has a titanium on hardened steel um, lockup which definitely isn't the worst which definitely isn't the worst but with this blade and it's very hard to see if you guys will be able to see it at all but there is actually a ceramic ball bearing in here that interfaces with the locking mechanism giving it a bit longer or greater potential service life so something like this is crafted to last you an entire lifetime with a service and warranty to back that up another thing that's worth mentioning about chris reeve and many other contemporaries in this price range is that you have things like spa treatments where you can send your blade back they can re, re sandblast or bead blast the handles to give it a you know kind of new look they can resharpen refinish the blade once again these services do cost money but you're keeping that same blade and you're keeping it for the life for the, for your life in a time so those are things that you're going to see that are extras that are provided by a knife company and those are some of the reasons why knives are more expensive and a lot of people seem to forget so yeah, oftentimes a lot of people don't factor these extra services and costs into their knives. And this is one of the things or a really good um, example of this is SE knives. If you know SE knives, you know that they originated from Ontario Knife Company's RAT or RAT series of blades. And oftentimes the RAT series knives are, you know, half the price of an SE. But when you buy an SE, you're essentially paying for two knives because with SEs, um, you lifetime backing of their products if you break them for whatever reason at any time doing whatever you can send them back and get a brand new knife and so that's the type of service that comes with more expensive knives and part of the reason why more expensive knives are well more expensive is you are ultimately paying for services that guarantee you a long life to your tools or if they fail replacement or ample replacement of those tools all right 
Last one up is the thousand dollar knife. And this guy is a little bit more than a thousand dollars, but is a full custom. Now, as I've talked about in previous videos, you know, when you look at a full custom, nothing on paper really adds up to it. Once again, as these last previous knives showcase, you know, it is full titanium with handles, pocket clip, all of that stuff is titanium. Now I will say this one is on ball bearings for its um, action. So it is a little bit of an improvement in step up in quality. And so that is a potential plus, but ultimately there's nothing on paper that really makes this worth or justifiably expensive. At the end of the day, what makes it a thousand dollar knife is the fact, or few facts actually, in one that is that it is a custom. So all of these previous mentioned knives are made in mass by machines that are uh, operated by people to crank out thousands of pieces and parts. So there's no really individualized machining and you know making of the pieces. With a custom knife like this, everything is hand done. So all of the texturing grooves, all of everything on this blade is handmade or at least hand finished and you know like cut by hand. Everything is done with a lot more man hours I guess is the best way to put it. So of course they're likely using machines to make these knives but they're using machines by hand like belt sanders and such to accomplish the end goal or the end product and because of that you're going to see a lot more hand touched or you know um kind of customized things. So like the spine here is all textured by hand. Once again, the spine of the blade or the back of the blade, I should say, or handle, sorry, is, uh, you know, textured. Everything on this is done by hand and gone over with a microscope, so to speak. In addition to, you will begin to see more colorful and more customized things like Timascus being featured into blades that are going to be in this price range. And so because of those more expensive features, you're going to expect to pay a lot more. In addition, once again, because you're paying for the man hours of this blade, you're going to expect to pay a lot more. And this kind of what essentially this means is that you're paying for one person to craft a knife, whereas this blade here is made by a multitude of people using machines to crank out, you know, handle slabs, to crank out blades, heat treat those blades in mass, and, you know, so on and so forth. So this is something that is made very efficiently, still to a very high quality, but this is something that is handcrafted. So this is going to be a you know one-off whereas there's going to be thousands of these anyways guys hopefully this kind of clears the waters and uh explains why you know expensive knives get progressively more expensive does more money equal more better sometimes yes of course there are always more and there are always worse and better uh, examples and scenarios and makers. So it's important to do your due diligence, but by and large, when you do buy a more expensive blade, you are getting premium, more premium materials, more premium service, more premium attention to detail, and potentially, you know, more desirable countries of origin. Anyways, guys, as always, God bless, and I'm out.